Good afternoon to everybody. Bashat Balotra. Um, I'd like to this week share an insight which I don't think is so like a uh, novel on the one hand. I don't think it's uh, very, very profound. I think it's like, quite straightforward, but I think it has immense uh, uh, relevance and that it's a very important principle. Uh, we'll start with the Gemara uh, in Masechet Chulin. And the Gemara goes like this. It says in our parasha that uh, one Pasuk says that the Levi'im had to start off their service at the age of 25 years old. Then the Gemara quotes another Pasuk in our parasha that says that the Levi'im started off their service in the Beit HaMikdash at the age of 30 years old. So how do we put these two things together? So the Gemara says, because at 25 years old, they started off their apprenticeship, they started off their studies, and at 30 years old, that's when they started uh, They started to work. So like, a, like an engineer, like an accountant, whatever, went to, uh, there's a course of uh, four years or five years, and then you start, uh, you, you get your degree, and then you start to, to work. So that's how it was in the Libyan. Okay, so we, the Gemara now has resolved the various psukim, and then the Gemara now learns something else. It adds on that from here we can see that uh, since uh, it was five years, five years of uh, apprenticeship of learning, if a person learned for five years and he saw no siman bracha, he saw no indication of any blessing in his learning, then he's not going to see it afterwards, and then um, he might as well give up and choose uh, another vacation. Many people have asked, uh, but the reality doesn't seem like that because you see many people, they go to university, and let's say they fail the first year, second year, whatever it is, and you see that they do graduate. Sometimes they graduate later. Uh, in Israel, there's always Moed Aleph, Moed Bet. You see that people that after five years, they didn't necessarily um, uh, were successful, but afterwards they were successful. Uh, some people say that let's just get uh, just get to the technical first part, part first. That what the Gemara's meaning is correct. A person could now, uh, with more effort, what they could have done is that they, after five years, they could still not succeed. But since the Torah has got a cutoff point, that the Levi may have to now start off at the age of 30, and if the person now didn't succeed in the first five years, he's going to start off at the age of 31 or 32. So then that's not like um, the ideal way that we want the Levi to serve in the Beit HaMidash. We want them to start off Dafka at 30. Now, all this is just uh, in order to, uh, like I brought in the headline, what I wanted to do was to bring a story and the story clarifies what exactly our sages mean. And I think this is a very important aspect in learning the Torah and the tradition of the Torah, is that sometimes we've got a statement of the Talmud, and we don't really understand what the parameters are. We don't really understand what ex exactly it's saying. Not because it's so difficult, but because it lacks that definition. And sometimes then, when we hear from our sages, when you hear from the masters of Torah Shabbat Peh, when you hear from the Gdolim, certain stories, then we under begin to understand what exactly was the, uh, the, the sages, what was the Talmud trying to say. And that's what actually also, in a larger me measure, uh, on the macro level, that's what the whole book of Bereshit is, with, when we define good, bad characteristics of the, uh, of, of the Avot, we can't really define it properly always through halacha. When we hear, learn the stories of Abraham, Yitzhak, Yaakov, and Sarah, Rachel, Valaya, etc., then we understand better like what the philosophical or what the halacha is trying to say. So this is a story. Um, when uh, Rav Kanevsky, not the son who passed away now, but his father, who was known as a stipler in about 1985, he passed away. So um, uh, what happened was that uh, someone from Mishalayim, a certain Rabbi Feldman, uh, came from Mishalayim, and he came to the he came to the stipler to ask him about a certain. He came with a student who was learning in a yeshi, in his in a yeshiva. And that uh, that person was uh, he he was a little bit slow, 
And because he was a little bit slow, he found it very difficult to make any progress in his learning. So he came to, like, sort of, um, before he's sort of suggesting to the child, to the student, that, you know what, it's maybe not for him to be in yeshiva and not to learn. So um, what he's do is, is he came to the uh, stipler, to Rav Kanevsky, the Kedlat Yaakov in Bnei Brak. Okay, so he writes in the note, he writes a little petek, that you know what, he's come to um, speak about the following thing, that you know the Gemara in Machsechet Chulin on Tav Chav Dalet, it says that if a student has got a problem um, uh, with learning, so after five years, like, uh, just don't, uh, so to speak, don't torture the person, it's not for him, let him go and do something else. He doesn't have to sit and learn. So, um, okay, he sees the petek, the Kilat Yaakov, and he turns now to the he turns now to the student and he says to him, tell me, when you came, before you came into the yeshiva, was there one Mishnah, that's all, one Mishnah that you were able to learn by yourself? So he says, no, I couldn't. He says to him, and now, I'm not asking you Gemara, I'm not asking Rashi, I'm not asking you Tosfot, I'm just asking a simple question. Can you take now one Mishnah, that's all, one Mishnah and learn it by yourself without help? He says, yes, I can do it. Okay, he says, now, can you take a Kitsu Shulchan Aruch? The, not the Shulchan Aruch, the Kitsu Shulchan Aruch. Can you take the abridged version of the Shulchan Aruch? And what you can do is, before you came into the yeshiva, um, could you prepare it by yourself? Like one line, could you prepare it by yourself and understand it? He says, no. He says, and now? Can you take one line in the Shulchan Akitsu Shulchan Aruch and now could you read it and sort of understand it? So he says, yes, now I can. Akilat Yaakov was a terrifying person. He was someone who people were mama scared of. And he turns around to the Shrapa Felman and says to, he starts to scream to him. He said, you slept all the way from your Shalayan with this Talmud. And you tell me that over here in the Petek, that this person didn't make any progress. Yeah, I asked this person, can he learn a Mishnah by himself? Yes. Can he learn over here a little bit of a Kitsu Shulchan Aruch by himself? Yes. And you call yourself like an educator. Is this what the Gemara says, that he finds no bracha? I just think this is an amazing story. When we think to ourselves, you know what, I haven't made progress, or I don't see any bracha, we're not sure what actually it means. And over here comes a story and it clarifies. Now, you don't have to now jump from over here, let's say a BA to having like a master's or to being a doctorate. You don't have to have, have mastered that now that when you came to the yeshiva, you could do this. And now you say to yourself, but I still can't do a Gemara by myself. I can't learn Tosfot. I can't learn Rambam. I can't prepare by myself. But when the Gemara says Siman Bracha, this is what the story, this is how the Gdolim, they tell us that they, the ones who are able to give us and to show us what the Gemara means, it means even if there's like minor changes, there's a certain amount of uh, a certain amount of progress. In fact, after this meeting, this person, this Talmud, he became a person who was very, um, he was very afraid and he was very, very uh, good at halacha. He a lot, knew a lot of Mishnah Brura, a lot of Shuchan Aruch, with a Pior Alacha. So, okay, he wasn't a person who now knows all of the Moren of Uchim and he doesn't know all the Gmarot. But to say that he didn't see a Siman Bracha, on his level he saw a Siman Bracha. So that's the greatness over here of, uh, in this story, not only do we learn about that, uh, okay, that when a person doesn't see a certain amount of blessing, then he should take the hint and we're not pushing a person to do things against what their natural ability is. But then on the other hand, we learn from the story of the, of the stipler, the Kehilat Yaakov, on how we have to measure. We have to measure things uh, like in a different way. Right? That's like the greatness of the story. Shabbat Shalom Nekulam.